Welcome back, guys. We have Nathan and Andy in the studio, to, studio today. How are you guys doing? Good. good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. How was practice? Not bad. Yeah, it, was yeah. a, it was a good day. Yeah. yeah, it was a good day. Good compete yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to dive right into the first segment, BSU. So we're going to talk about a couple of stuff. I always sit on on the presser, so I hear Coach Hastings' thoughts. And he said Friday, he said it was really good. He talked about you a lot, Andy, actually, and that's why you're in here because he said you had a really good um, series, a couple of games, you know, made some good passes, been wanting to get better and been having the opportunity to get better and showing with getting your first goal. So take me through how that's been going, you know, getting your first goal in the series. Yeah, um, I think, you know, played the first 20 games and was out of lineup for five games. And uh, as an athlete, it's frustrating. Um, you want to be out there. You want to be competing. Um, that's what we're here to do. And um, kind of hit the reset button and got back to what makes me a good hockey player and playing a little bit of an edge. And, uh, yeah, I was able to get rewarded with uh, a, a goal there. And so it's good to be back, though. Absolutely. So what are you guys thinking? Well, obviously going into this, you knew that BSU was going to be a really tough series. They're number two right behind you, like six points as of now, but nine points coming in. And it was going to be hard. They're physical. They've got the top three PK in the nation. So what were your, like, just before we get into how do you think you did, like, what were your thoughts going into the series? Were you a little bit nervous? Were you excited to get back home? What was going through your mind before anything else happened? Uh, yeah, else happened? We, we definitely knew it was going to be a hard series. Um, you know, like you said, they're a good team. They're number two. So we uh, we went into it knowing it was a pretty important weekend for us. And uh, all the guys were pretty excited to be back home, though. So we had a lot of energy. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, they're a good team. Um, we were definitely excited to be back home. Uh, we had kind of heard the rumors it was going to be a pretty packed house which it was both nights I think it was 5,000 plus both are mm -hmm. pretty darn close um, but no it, you know their penalty kill was good and um, but it was just uh, we were excited to be home um, played with some energy um, but yeah I feel like it was a really good test for you guys too because you went to Bowling Green and then you also went to Ferris State those last two home, um, road series and the one that really tested you guys probably was more was Bowling Green, but they're, the PSU is like your in-state rival, and they're probably the biggest rivals you're gonna have. They're like Bowling Green of last year, I would say. So this would be, this was a really good test for you guys, and it's hard because you're gonna see them down the road. You're gonna see them. You're gonna be at home, and you're gonna play a, a series. So that's gonna be also hard. But I mean, they're an aggressive team. They held you guys to the perimeter. I thought. You know, they tried their best to hold it to the perimeter in the neutral zone, and they were kind of on you a little bit like white on rice. And you could tell, was that hard, having a team that dishes out the puck like pretty much the minute you get in your zone and trying to make things happen, and it was a little bit more of a slower start than you guys would have usually liked? Yeah, they they definitely defend hard. Um, that's kind of Bemidji's motto. Um, they'll defend. Uh, they'll force to the outside. They really won't give up a ton. Um, I think we saw that a lot, uh, especially Friday night. I think the shots after the first period were five to three us. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the game, I don't know if it, either team got above 25. And then Saturday night, we doubled that and we had 50. Um, and it was just kind of one of those games where the wasn't able to find the back of the net. Um, but, yeah, they, they do a good job of defending, and uh, and Dresco played really well as, mm -hmm. as well. What are you thinking, Smith? I mean, yeah, you know, like they, they're on us pretty tight all the time. Um, like, like Carol said, we got 50 shots and we just couldn't bury any um, till late there. So, uh, you know, as an offensive team, like we're pretty talented, I think, and it's pretty frustrating for um, a team like that to have to, you know, come out of the zone and they just get the puck and like chip it out or something like that. So. Um, I mean, we were pretty we were pretty happy though to get those two at the end. We we thought we could get that third one, but it was unfortunate they got the empty netter. I was gonna say the last one you guys had at Bowling Green actually kind of the same thing. OT went in, and then you scored the OT winner, yeah. right? So a little bit of have you guys maybe been relying on that a lot going in the past? You know, you had Bowling Green this um, championship game. You kind of won like that last year too then you won there have you been re relying maybe a little bit too much if we can pull it out we're a good team or you think it's just hard because Bemidji was so like you said on you you know I don't think it's so much relying on it mm -hmm. I think it's more of a positive when we don't have our a game or our 
Um, you know, pucks are finding the back of the net on 50 shots, which would maybe get three or four pretty easily mm -hmm. usually. Um, we don't give up. Um, and I think that's what's going to make us a good team, especially coming on the the run, is it's not so much that we're relying on. It's just that we always, we're always we always in the fight. Um, and it's we always know that no matter how much time's left on the clock, I mean, with 3, three nothing with six minutes left, most teams are like, all right, we might as well just start packing, yeah, we're the, done. We're packing out. the extra you know, stuff in Absolutely. the locker or whatever. And we're like, hey, let's go. And, you know, I don't – see many other teams pulling a goaltender with six, six 40, minutes six minutes and 44 seconds left um but i think that just speaks to the um like somebody said the skill level um mm -hmm. they didn't really touch the puck until they scored that empty net or yep. so but um i don't always think it's a negative thing it's always a positive thing kind of like you're giving it your all and putting your heart out there i was going to actually ask you guys about that too i mean you're right you don't pull goaltenders with six minutes to go and especially one like Dryden, like Dryden's a huge force in the back of the net, but you just kind of needed that six, another man, another advantage, six on five advantage. And once you got that first goal, it was like bang, bang, like your momentum just switched. And Hastings talked about a lot too in the presser, it's hard to crack the egg, but once you do this as a team, you crack the egg, it's like game on. Mm -hmm. And you saw it on Friday, right? You got that one by you in the second period and it was kind of like game on, like, okay, we've got this, we've got the momentum and it carried throughout the entire game. And you guys always talk about how important is it to crack the egg early. So, I mean, is that something that was a little bit harder or like kind of struggle with to crack the egg? I mean, we've talked about it a lot, but it was just this kind of, the, yeah, kind of just like the story of the game. That was, that was it. Yeah, I mean, I thought we had a lot of good chances, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we had a lot of good, uh, like right in front of the net in the slot area. So, uh, like, like he said earlier, Driscoll played really well. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you, you shoot 50, 50 shots on that and you expect at least three or four to go in. Yeah. So uh, just sucks when we got, you know, what was it, when we get our first one? Three, you got it like yeah. three minutes, yeah. 340 ish. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I think it was, it was by Gerard, I want to yeah. say. It was Dallas. by Gerard. Yeah. Was it, yeah. Ger no, Gerard? Dallas. Dallas, 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 Dallas and then Charlie. Yeah. 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 yeah that's what it is. They have the same similar names. Yeah. yeah. Remember the first time I got into this, like, do not mess up Charlie Gerard and Dallas Gerard yeah. because they will get pissed at you. <laughs> it was like, oh, God, that's a lot of pressure. But, I mean, and it's so hard because, like, you said, like, he just go played amazing. He played really yeah. well, and Hastings tossed it to him in the presser, and he was like, you got to toss it. You got you to gotta show when a, when a goaltender is playing that well, it's kind of like you try your best. You put it all on the line, and you go really hard all the time. And I think he did a good job. And with – have you ever gotten fifty shots on goal? Like, with have you guys done that I don't before? Know about this year. I, I don't think know we, if it's this year, we, but I think we've done it. Uh, we did it down in Huntsville Friday night. Oh, that would that would make sense against Huntsville. Um, I know we did it a few times la my freshman year. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think yeah. other than I think maybe one game in Huntsville. Game. At least we were pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. But is that kind of a a little bit of a mentality of get it in the net, get in the net, get in the net? Like you were, guys were just trying really really hard i mean you know we, we strive to get like 35 40 shots a game so okay like i mean when we're getting up in those numbers we're you know you're usually going to score three or four yeah absolutely so. and uh i mean i think our team's pretty well like we're pretty good defensively mm -hmm. so we put up three or four goals and we're usually going to come out with a win yeah i know i looked up at the uh scoreboard before right before we took um or right before we pulled dryden and I think we were already at 37. Yep. And with, I think that was a maybe seven and a half, eight minutes to play. Um, and at that number, I mean, that's a very, very good number to be at. And, uh, you know, I think it, there was kind of a little energy on the best, like on the bench, like 38's going in, and we got 30, 39's going in. And uh, it was just a little, little too late. Mm -hmm. but we had some good chances, too. Yeah. I mean, you guys did. Toomey hit the bar. Yeah. I oh, that wide. crossbar. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That hit, and I was like, I'm like, it's going in. It's going in. And then I had the coach test, and they said crossbar. I was like, ow. Yeah. That one really hurt. And then you had you had a good play, too, that almost yeah. went yeah. in and went out, slightly out of it, too. Yeah, Nikki made a great play to get that puck back to me, and I just had a ton of speed. and Souvenir. Yeah. No, Driscoll, Driscoll came out and challenged it, and it was kind of – I picked my head up, and mm -hmm. it was like I got one spot 
to hit and I missed it by, you know, maybe a half an inch. <laughs> half an inch. And, yeah. That's but. how it goes sometimes. I mean, that's just how it is in sports. Sure. It's always like the little ones, you know, like the, you know, you're going for a layup or you're going for a three pointer and it's like that much. It's like that difference. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes, sometimes that's what needs to happen though to uh, kind of get your head back in the game. Like, you know, we're not invincible. We're really, really good, but like adversity. Yo, know, I always talk about big on adversity. We've talked about that when we, you guys, for the Mariucci Classic, St. Cloud. I think it's just good to get some, not even good, but just to get the adversity games to be like, okay, well, this is hard. We don't like losing. We don't yeah. want to lose. And we're a little gonna, reset. Yeah, exactly. A little reset and be like, mentality, here we go. Now we're going to go over to Alaska, and then we've got Northern Michigan and Huntsville, and we've got some more home games, and then we've got BSU back at it at their place. So I think it was it's it's hard to do it's hard to split in your in your crowd when you especially have got record breaking like five thousands each attendance night but sometimes it just needs to happen so I think we've talked enough about that and we're gonna jump on into um, Anchorage Alaska long long road series yeah. you guys are you guys going out tomorrow right yep yep going up there and I feel like it's always hard to go on road series especially when you have the two, like we talked about before, come back for one series at home and then go all the way to Anchorage, Alaska. I mean, is it tiring for you guys? Uh, I mean, it, it wears on you a yeah. little bit. I mean, we're we're fortunate enough that we get to fly, so. Uh, oh, that's super I mean, nice. Like to like Bowling Green. Yep. And, um, you know, we have, a, we have a day off each week, so just kind of chill out, rest, and get back at it Monday. Yeah. That's all you can really do. I was uh, I was just on the radio show with Sully a couple minutes ago, and he was uh, he was saying you're gonna have four different series in four different states in mm -hmm. four different weeks. Yeah. And I was like, man, don't put it like that. It doesn't make that, you feel that good. doesn't make you feel <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, no, this this trip will be fun. Um, this will be the first time for both of us going to Anchorage. I went to Fairbanks last oh, year, yeah. but we didn't play Anchorage up in Anchorage last year. So, oh yep. Um, I think. Uh, we're gonna be at a different rink than the upperclassmen have played at before too. Oh, really? So it's gonna be a, a little bit of a change, I think, for for everyone. A new experience. Uh, yeah. Weird. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I think they're playing. I, th I think the rink that they're playing at used to be their old practice rink. Okay. Uh, I think it's on campus. So I think the upperclassmen practice there. Their freshmen or the juniors now. It would have been their freshman year when they were mm -hmm. up there for the Fairbanks Alaska back to back. Yeah. But, um, no, it'll be fun. Excited yeah. just to get doing it, kind of, and get going up there. It's nice that you guys get to fly, though. Yeah, Because that really just, nice. I mean, I don't even know how long that is. I know from even from, like, I think it's, like, Ferris State, it's, like, 10 hours or whatever, mm -hmm. Bowling Green. It's, like, so just having all those, that's kind of good to break that up a little bit. Yeah. You don't have to be stuck on a bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, doesn't, okay, so I've never been to Alaska. You guys have been to, is it, like, Minnesota? Is there, like, no sun? Is it like no. weird? Is there like actually a sun? This I've is just a question. Been, so. It, you know. So I've been there, uh, probably like my mid teenage years. Mm -hmm. I went up there for a family vacation during the summer, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, is it? Um, absolutely gorgeous. Like we went uh, to Kenai, um, the whole park there. Um, we were in Fairbanks and Anchorage, so I've been there during the summer. Um, it's beautiful. Interesting. Um, and then during the winter. I think there are times like right around the early December mark where it's like it probably is dark most of the day. Mm -hmm. But like last year we were up there, I want to say like mid-February. So we were up there pretty late. So by then it was, you know, it was normal daylight yeah. time. But um, I guess we're a little bit closer to December 21st December, now. So we'll yeah. see. So what is the practice plan for UAA for you guys? Like um, this is a little more offensive forward, you know, because – they're going to be more defensive forward. You're going to try to be more pushing towards offensive forward. And they're only ranked eighth right now in the WCHA standings, 19 points. You guys are one with 52 points. So what are just some goals that you guys have, maybe getting like more quality shots on goal or just puck management, getting those good shots? What are you guys thinking? I think first and foremost, that's going up there and getting six points. Mm -hmm. um, I think as we move – towards the end of the season it's making sure you find a way to to get that accomplished mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i think as of late we've been trying to pride ourselves on on getting more and more shots um getting that 30 35 plus every game um so i think that'll be moving forward and uh 
just limiting um getting back to our you know one to zero goals against a game and and generating more definitely what are you thinking Nathan uh, I think puck management is definitely going to be a big one um be hard to play against just be hard in mm -hmm. general um defend really well and like you said just get a bunch of shots I mean that's like I said we try to get like 35 40 every game and just play full 60 and then you know get get a sweep get a sweep and see what happens mm -hmm. is this going to be a little more of a confidence boost kind of going up there and trying to get those w's and get those points but a little bit more of you're not playing someone as aggressive as bsu or maybe even aggressive as bowling green or is it like we talk about this a lot it's a game it's a game you try to go up there you try to win you try to get those six points i mean i think we're just going to go out there and just play our game yep uh every every game every weekend against no matter who it is yeah um that's that's really all there is to it like i said just play full 60 be hard defend and shoot the puck yeah. pucks deep pucks deep pucks, pucks on deep. it <laughs> so you guys did a really good job going back to bsu of staying out of the box and you needed to do that is that something that hastings has talked maybe a little bit more because earlier in the season you guys were kind of getting to the box a little bit more than maybe should have, but you guys did a really good job of staying out. Is that something Hastings has said? Oh, like, yeah. we need to stay out of the box. I'll, I'll let maybe take this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's on. I mean, I've been taking a lot of penalties lately, so he's been mm -hmm. on me a lot for it. Um, and That's not good, Nathan. <laughs> no, we we we've we've definitely. Uh, it, it starts on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, as many said, defending and and we pride ourselves in defending hard and. Um, I think sometimes it, you know, you'll draw or you'll take a, a couple where it's just like you're trying to be an awesome defender. And mm -hmm. um, but we definitely, I thought this past weekend we took a step and a big step in the right direction in terms of that. And um, especially coming down the stretch when you get into those playoff series and the NCAA tournament, um, when it's one game, it's like you got to make sure you're out of the box and. When you do take one, penalty kills. Absolutely. Um, a huge part of it. You got to try to stay out of the box and get that momentum because I feel like that's just like with the stoppages and it affects the flow of the game, it affects the momentum, and it's just not good. So we're going to do um, last road series for a while. How are you guys feeling yeah. about that? Excited? Excited to get that last one out then kind of be at home a little more regularly? Uh, I am, yeah. Yeah? I like playing at home. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody does. and. Uh, I think we have a lot of energy. Everybody loves playing at home, not just me. Um, and we just, you know, we, we come out, we like to play for the people. And, mm -hmm. um, just, yeah. Getting, getting at home at the Mayo Clinic Health System Event yeah, Center. Yeah, word full of there. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't say the full thing anymore. I mean, like I, I said in the intro when I was talking about it, and I was like, I'm out of breath. It's just a lot. It's... And I think it's like a thing. It's like you can't say like Mayo Clinic Arena or like Mayo Clinic this because it's their full name is Mayo Clinic Health System. Well, wonderful for me. I don't want to do that. But I mean, that's all I've got for UAA series. And uh, good, look, good luck to you guys going up there. Long trip. Thank but you. we're gonna go into a little bit of casual talk. I saw you guys at the Anthony Ford Pond Hockey Classic. I was volunteering for track. I was doing concessions and walking around. So awesome that you guys do then volunteer do you just hang around there hang out with the fans just watch a little pond hockey or what's up with that yeah um we just we usually split into two different groups um so there's not like too many of us at a certain mm -hmm. time um but we get out there um try and get back to the community um a lot of those people out there um are the ones that come support us every friday and saturday night um so it's be able it, it's cool to be able to get out there um talk with the kids, talk with their parents, have them ask questions, pictures, autographs, whatever it may be. Um, and as a Minnesota kid, there's nothing better. And, you know, at, at one point I'm like, is there an extra pair of skates and stuff? Right, here? Like, can, can I, I, can I, I play go play, hockey? Can I go play with these kids? <laughs> but, um, no, it's it's fun. It's really cool to be out there. And um, it it's, gives me the chills thinking about it. Um, you know, obviously it's a bad reason uh, what's the best way to put this? It's, it's a, a good it's a, cause. It's a, it's a, it's a good, cause. good, it's a great cause mm -hmm. for a very unfortunate situation. Yes. Um, but it, it's such a, it's such a cool way to commemorate someone that absolutely loved the game. Yeah. So I couldn't think of a better way, especially in Minnesota, to be able to do it. Yeah, my coach was like, we had to do volunteers for like 
whatever. So we were gonna usually do Kiwanis lights, which is fun, but not what you want to do. So he's like, oh, do you want to do like, and I heard pond hockey. I was like, yes, yes, I'm a cap. So I was like, yes, we're doing the pond hockey. And I was super excited. Like one of the teammates was like, are those the MSU players? I was like, yeah. So I gave her background information on what you guys are doing. And she's like, that's the coolest thing I think I've ever heard that they actually come out here and talk to the guys and talk to everyone and just be a part of the community. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's such a, it's such a cool event. Mm-hmm. I was talking with Larry Wilde on Friday and interviewing him and talking about that. And I mean, it's unfortunate for what happened, but the fact that there's a lot of proceeds that go to the foundation and you can just see, you know, kids playing pond hockey and just getting out there and, you know, the parents getting into it and having all that is like the coolest thing. So yeah. I was super excited to see that and see you guys. What were you thinking about it, Nathan? Uh, it was fun. I yeah? mean, I heard last year that it was, what was it like? Negative. Oh, it was cold was last really? year. Yes, yeah. so cold. Oh, no. So I, was, I was pretty grateful to get out there, and, you know, it was decent weather. It was, like, 30 when we went. Yeah, it was. Um, but, yeah, like he said, I mean, it's a it's a great cause, and it's fun to go out there and just interact with the kids. It's still and, cold uh, for the Florida boy. Still, yeah. He's like, oh, too bad. 30 God. degrees. It's not too bad. As he's, like, shivering. He's, yeah. like, oh, so toughen it out. Getting so used to it. I, I like I thought it was beautiful weather like yeah. and there was even like ice like that was like melting and like it was that warm and it was it's just that's the thing that's hard about pond hockey is that you know obviously it's outside and it's Minnesota so some days you can get like it's snowing right now and it's cold and it's like oh crap and then like you said it's negative degrees and when it's negative out you still got to go and do your you still got to do it but mm-hmm. it's like miserable doing it <laughs> it's like I don't want to be out here so the fact that it was really good weather is awesome so we're going to do some more, like, different sport talk. We're going to talk about Kobe Bryant. You guys heard that, right? I think I was, like, <laughs> I probably was freaking out, and, like, we were doing concessions at Anthony Ford, and I was looking up something, and I was, like, no way. Yeah. I checked my phone. I was, like, like pacing. I was, like, Kobe Bryant's gone. Like, Kobe Bryant died. And all my teammates were, like, it's fake news. It's fake news. That's what we thought, too. Yeah. It was, like, it's fake. It won't happen. It's not happening. And it, like, for real was, like. It came out, and I was like, this is ridiculous. It's kind of, it's really tragic just to, like, were you guys Kobe Bryant fans at all? Are you Kobe Bryant fans? Um, I mean. It's like hockey, hockey player stipulation. Like, do you still watch basketball, even though you're in hockey kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, uh, I, I liked Kobe. I mm-hmm. mean, I never had, like, watching basketball, like, I never had, like, I did not not like him. Yeah. Know? Um, He's obviously, like, one of the best to ever play, mm-hmm. so um, that's something to obviously recognize, and. He's an inspiration. I mean, you just watch all the videos on social media that people put out and all that stuff and uh, everything he did for the community after he was done. And, Absolutely. Um, it's just it's just sad and it's really tragic to see something like that. And not only him, but for the other families too and his daughter yes. as well. So. It's so sad to hear, like, have Kobe, but to have Gigi go and, yeah. you know, all the other players and the parents. And it's just such a sad, sad event because he was – he was going to make the biggest impact on women's sports. Mm-hmm. I just know it. He, like, with having Gigi and her being involved, and there were side-by-sides videos of, you know, his iconic fadeaway, and, you know, what he does, step back, boom, fadeaway, and they were going back-to-back on, like, how Gigi did it and how Kobe did it, Yeah. and they were the same. <laughs> and it was funny because I saw a video, too, and everyone's like, y'all, you got to have a boy. You got to have a boy take over your legacy. And she's like, nah, 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 like, I got this. I got this. Yeah. And just to have that happen, I was it's so sad. Yeah, I I don't it, know. What do you think? Anyway? I mean, I, I've been a Kobe fan for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was drawn to him by hearing about his work ethic. Um, some of the stories that, that he was telling on or that I saw on social media for, you know, multiple times. But uh, the story about where his teammates are like, hey, like, you know, let's go out tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, on a back to back, he he can't remember where he was, but uh, they're on the road, and he goes, "All right, fine." Like, you know, I didn't go out with him the last like whatever five times, and he goes, "All right, fine, I'll go out with you." But then like tomorrow, like you got to do what I do. And they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Oh yeah, I saw that. So they, so oh, they go God. out, and uh, you know they go out, and Kobe goes, "Yeah, I had you know I drank with them, whatever," and they're playing the next night, and uh, five o'clock rolls around the next morning, he's pounding on everyone's doors. No way. And I'm like, well, Kobe, what are you doing? He goes, it's work days, guys. Like, we got to get ready for the game. So he made them all come to the gym. They got their workout in, and then they shot. Uh, went back, like, did everything that Kobe does. And, uh, yeah, so uh, if that's not a Kobe story and a work yeah. ethic, like, he knows when it's time to 
to have fun and but he also i mean his his work ethic and um the saddest part is, is that you know the helicopter and but he's been on a helicopter i mean that's how he travels in la all the time to be like to spend time more time with his family absolutely i was i watched a video about that that he was basically that's how he traveled from oh, yeah. his house to his to the to the gym is by helicopter and so he said he would i saw that video too because he said well, I started mainly traveling by helicopter because any time with my family member I can do. So, you know, Vanessa was like, oh, I'll pick the kids up. And she's like, no, 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 no. I want to pick the kids up because that's 20, 30 minutes I get, yeah. to, get to talk to them in the car, yeah. right? That's 20, 30 minutes that maybe I don't get because I'm so busy. And it's kind of hard to think about. And that was his, that was his go-to helicopter driver. It wasn't some novice out there, you know, not knowing. It was like his number one. And it was just like the weather. Yeah. Like the weather was just, it, there was nothing you could do about it. They were flying too low. Yeah, it was said. like, they were flying too low and the fog, um, it was like fog and anything else was just like they couldn't see. It was like white out out there. Yeah. And then it just went, boom, they just went down and. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tragic. And I think that, you know, like the Mamba mentality and everything else is carrying through through a lot you can see a lot of stuff oh, it will for always ever too you know you know Bron lebron's gonna go win the like, guy, the guy you was know he's gonna go win the championship legend so oh like, yeah i mean you see it even with you know like hockey games yeah like different sports are just you know like moment of silence here and there all over the world absolutely just, you had soccer you know going to the two four you I had mean, pro bowlers doing kobe you had the where the wolves went back and they took an eight like a eight second violation put the I ball did you see that yeah. put where the ball was where he got broke a record and it was yeah. like everyone's doing that because it's not just some guy who's really good at basketball it's some guy who well he's actually one of the one, top greatest basketball players and just the mentality he has is just it was just sad i had to throw that talk in there because i've been talking about it for a while and like going through it but we're gonna talk a little bit one more talk before we go Super Bowl talk. Oh. We're talking about the Super Bowl. Dun -dun 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 Who do you guys have in? Who do you think? It's San Francisco. Who's the, the other team? Chiefs? The Chiefs? You don't even know, guys? Oh, I, I knew it's San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, it's the 49ers and the Chiefs. So you got Jimmy Garoppolo and you got Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to go with the athletic quarterback then. So Kansas City. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mahomes? Yeah, for sure. I think, I definitely think that everyone kind of wants either team. I know that they beat. The 49ers beat the Vikings. But I went into that game, I was like, I just don't know if we can pull it off against the Garoppolo and the way that we played. I was like, uh. And then they beat they beat the Packers. So I was like, okay, well, now I got to root for them. Yeah. You know? I think they're just are you, like they're just the better team. And I think you have Mahomes, who's just young, athletic. Yeah, I mean, didn't he have a really good year last year? Mahomes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So he kinda, he's had back-to-back he back years. Yeah. He does. He's got back-to-back -back good years, and he's just – He's a quarterback that he can throw, right? He, he can whatever. run. Mm -hmm. He's got, you know, he can rush, and he he's just his football IQ is so amazing. That there's no, I just don't know if there's a way. If and if the 49ers win, I mean, hey man. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I know the 49ers that like they're they got to be like top two, three defense mm -hmm. in the league. So it'll be yep. interesting to see with uh, with Bosa coming off the end if. Uh, he can keep Mahomes in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be that's fun. Gonna, that's going to be the key, the keep the Mahomes in the pocket and try not to get him as mobile yeah. as possible. So do you guys have any plans for watching it? Just at your guys' house? Sure. Or yeah. Um, I guess the probably the team will get together. and get, get together and watch it? Yeah. Watch it together. So that'll be good. That'll be good. Cool. Well, that's all we got. Had to throw in some talk in there. So good luck to the guys going up to Anchorage, Alaska. Thanks for coming on. And then we will be back next weekend to talk about Northern Michigan series. This episode's out on Apple and Spotify, so listen in and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.